Hello class, this is Mr. Hart, and this podcast we're going to finish up the energy unit by talking about power. Now again, you may have some intuition of what power is, but it has a very specific physics definition, so we want to make sure we get that down. So we're just going to jump right into it and talk about what is power. Okay. Now, if you are like me, you like really fast sports cars, okay? and you wish your car was a sports car, unless you have one. But I love watching a super fast sports car get up to speed. Okay? So here's a question I like to ask students. Okay? If you think about the sports car that can go from 0 to 60 in 3 seconds or whatever it is, it can get really fast in a short time. My car can get to 0 to 60 in about 20 seconds. Okay? But in the end, if my, my car and the sports car are going the same speed, which one has more energy? Which one has more kinetic energy? They'll have the same amount. Right? If, if they weigh the same, right? You know, they're going the same velocities. If they have the same mass, they have the same amount of kinetic energy. So why is this sports car so much cooler? Right? Well, it can get to that energy faster. So this is the key idea of power. Okay? It's not how much energy is present, but how much energy we use in a certain amount of time, how quickly we use the energy. Okay? So power has a very simple definition. It's simply the energy used over time or the work done over time. Okay? This is the key idea. It's in a certain time span. Okay? You probably heard of horsepower on a car engine. Okay? That's a measurement of power and it describes how quickly you can use the energy that your gasoline gives the car. Okay? And so this is what we're talking about when we talk about power. And there's a lot of applications of when we want to use power instead of just thinking about energy. Okay, but let's go into the mathematics. Okay, so power is just work over time. Okay, so power will use capital P. Uh, w, as we've seen before, is work. And little t is time. Now I put work here because that's the official definition, but you could easily put energy over time. It doesn't matter if it's work or energy. Again, they're kind of interchangeable depending on the context. So you can think of it as energy used over time or work done over time. Exact same thing. Let's think about the units here. Okay, Work and energy is measured in joules and time is measured in seconds. So that would be the same as a joule per second, right? Which is what we call a watt. Now, this may be the most confusing notation in physics, especially in this class. This capital W that comes after numbers is a unit that represents watt. That should not be confused with the capital W that's used as a variable to mean work. Okay? So W can equal 100 W or something like that. So it can be really confusing. If it's after a number, that's a unit. Okay? Just keep that in mind. This is a watt. And you've probably heard of watts before, like a 60 watt light bulb. Well, a 60 watt light bulb uses 60 joules every second. Okay, that's what it means. So let's do an example problem. So a man does 200 joules of work on a box in 25 seconds. How much power does the man use? Okay, well, we just say power equals work over time. That will be 200 joules in 25 seconds. Put that into our calculator, and we get that the power is 8 watts, okay? He's using 8 watts of power. He's using 8 joules every second, okay? Here's another one. A 60-watt light bulb runs from a 20,000-joule battery. How long will the light bulb run? Okay, well, again, we say power equals work over time. And in this case, it's really just energy. So I'm just going to replace this W with E. Again, you can do that. There's nothing wrong with that. But we're not solving for power this time. We're solving for time. So we're going to rewrite this as time equals energy over power, which in this case is we have 20,000 joules of energy stored up. Okay, We are running on a 60-watt light bulb. And when we put that into our calculator, we get that this will run for approximately 300 
and 33 seconds. Okay, which is probably why they don't run 60 watt light bulbs on batteries very often. Okay, but you can see this is a powerful application. If we know how, how much energy we have stored up and we know how fast we're using it, we can calculate how long it will last. Okay, so huge applications in a lot of scenarios. Okay, think if you were like a phone designer. Okay, the number one reason people don't like their phones is because the battery doesn't last long enough throughout the day. Okay, you can bet they're trying to optimize how much power their circuits are using. Okay, you only have a certain amount of energy stored in the battery for a given day. You want to use as little power as possible to power the phone. Okay, so that will last as long as possible. Okay, um, there's other applications as well with car engines, for example. Anything where you need to use a stored amount of energy, they're going to care a lot about how quickly they're using it. Okay. Um, there's another way we could write this, though. If we're talking specifically about motion, we can also write it in this form. Okay. This says that power equals the force applied times the velocity. Okay. Now you may wonder where this came from or why we can use it, okay? But it just comes from a very simple um, rewriting of the power equation. If we say power is work over time, okay, and we know that work is force times distance, then we can keep rewriting it and rearranging it in this fashion by putting distance and time together well, we know distance over time is the same as velocity, and so we get this. Okay, so just by some simple rewriting, we can get this version of the equation. But this is really good if we're testing motions of objects, okay, when we can get a clear velocity and a clear force applied. Okay, this is very common for cars, for example. Okay, so let's just do one example problem with that. A car engine pushes with a force of 5,060 newtons. If the car travels with a velocity of 24 meters per second, how much power does it have? So all we gotta do is say, well, power equals force times velocity. In this case, we know the force was 5,060 newtons of uh, force. The velocity was 24 meters per second. We times those together we get that the total power used by the car is 121,440 watts. Okay, and there we go. Now this is a really big number. It's often used in terms of horsepower when describing how much energy a car, or how much power a car is using. If I'm not mistaken, one horsepower equals about 720 watts, okay? So you may see this conversion factor come up in your homework, okay, where you'll need to just divide your wattage by 720 to put into horsepower, okay? But other than that, power is pretty straightforward. Just understand that in some cases we'll need to use the time to figure out the power rather than just worrying about energy because we can get more information about a system, okay? But that's it for today. Uh, make sure to do the homework and the lab. Um, hopefully this all made sense. Let me know if you have any questions and thank you for watching.